Welcome to Radflix 1995. My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am, I am Joe, Joe Pinion. What is a rad flick? A rad flick is a movie that has stood the test of time. Forget what those asshats, the critics, and the award shows said. We're here to fix history. Our panel of normal Canadians has got your back. Today on Rad Flicks, we have a member of our Rad Flicks Normal People panel. Welcome, Caro. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. In 1995, the Academy Awards went to, for Best Picture, Braveheart, and Best Director, Mel Gibson. Best Actor went to Nicolas Cage for Leaving Las Vegas. And Best Actress went to Susan and Sarandon for Dead Man Walking. I love Braveheart. Braveheart was such a good movie. Leaving Las Vegas, I know that, Joe, that was one of your favorite movies, and you love that. I, I read the book, but Braveheart, hell yeah. Some people that we lost in 1995, Dean Martin, George Abbott. First category for Rad Flicks, 1995 is Horror and Suspense. Six finalists for Horror and Suspense. The first finalist is Copycat, starring Sigourney Weaver, Holly Hunter, directed by John Amiel. Next finalist for Raddest Horror Suspense, 1995, is the movie Seven, starring Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, Kevin Spacey, directed by David Fincher. I've never been crazy about this movie. As good as it is, my friends were growing up, even my son loves it. What do you think of Seven? You know, it was really interesting because of the Seven Deadly Sin. Envy, Envy, Sloth. Is it Rat? If anyone knows them, put them in the comments. Yeah, put them in the comments. Uh, yeah, I wasn't paying attention that day at church. Next finalist for Radis Horror Suspense is Demon Knight, directed by Ernest Dickerson and starring Billy Zane and and William Sadler. It's more like a horror comedy, this one. Fun Avenue. The mysterious drifter Billy Zane battles demons who are after a powerful relic while holed up in a remote boarding house with a group of strangers. Billy Zane looks like he wears eyeliner. Next finalist for Radis Horror Suspense goes to Species. It stars Natasha Henstridge, Michael Madsen, directed by Roger Donaldson. This was like the big movie for Natasha. She's Canadian. Next up, falls a bit under the suspense category. This is directed by one of my favorite director is Terry Gilliam, a former member of Monty Python Squad. Starring Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt, the movie is 12 Monkeys. I went and saw it at the Caprice Theater in Nanaimo. Terry Gilliam is just amazing. I love all of his movies. This one ranks right near the top for me. Dystopian Future, Convict, Bruce Willis, sent back in time to gather information about a man-made virus that wiped out most of humanity. It's one of those movies too where you can watch it 20 times and kind of see something different every time. The final finalist for Raddest Horse Suspense 1995 from our Radflix panel of normal people goes to the movie directed by Larry Clark. The movie is Kids, uh, starring Leo Fitzpatrick and Justin Pierce. It's not a horror. It's not really a suspense. It's just scary. I saw this movie when I was a teenager. Scared the living bejesus out of me. It's awful. It's the most intense movie. Look at these teens, their life, some AIDS going on, and some drug use, and uh, some horrible things happening in this show. And it's very, very, very real. Educated us well because we were terrified of it. And that movie really hit home, seeing people's lives get ruined. So the raddest horror suspense movie of 1995 as voted on by our panel of normal Canadians was the movie Seven, directed by David Fincher, starring Brad Pitt, Kevin Spacey, and Morgan Freeman. Well-deserved. I'm pretty sure it was pretty much across the board. Yeah, almost across the board. Everyone should watch it. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's not a family movie night movie. There's a link in the description as well for the playlist of all the trailers mentioned in this show, plus some that didn't quite make the finalists so let us know your thoughts on each category as we go through vote in the comments below the next category for radflix 1995 is comedy raddest comedy or funniest movie of 1995 first finalist it's directed by tamra davis the movie is billy madison starring adam sandler darren mcgavin norm mcdonald when this movie came out i was it was summertime i was staying on salt spring island for the summer because i went to the video store to rent something i can't remember what but it wasn't in and so i rented Billy Madison instead brought it home damn near wore out the tape before I brought it back three days late the same story honestly the back to school Roddy Dangerfield I mean similar story so good Steve Buscemi has a really great role in this uh, uh, the pickle races he stamped on a bag of, he called the shit poop Chris Farley in this movie too and just like him, his whole bragging about getting with the teacher on the bus and O'Doyle rules and there's just a million lines from this one next finalist for Radis Comedy 1995 directed by 
Peter Siegel, starring David Spade and Chris Farley. The movie is Tommy Boy. Tommy Boy. Tommy Callahan. Automotive parts producer. And he's forced into the family business. David Spade and Chris Farley together. They played off each other so well. Fat guy in a little coat was something that Chris used to always do to David Spade around the office in Saturday Night Live. Not up here so much or down here, but right here. Chris Farley, one of the funniest people in history really next finalist for 1995 some really modern day classics here this one starring john candy and alan alda ria perlman and this is actually directed by michael moore the movie is canadian bacon this one just plays on so many different canadian stereotypes starring john candy starring a slew of canadians just a lot of cameos the whole way through kind of honestly reminds me a little bit of like uh, jay and silent bob a few years later one hilarious scene after the other only funnier with time next finalist speaking of jay and silent bob the next finalist directed by kevin smith starring jeremy london and jason lee in mall rats two slackers spend a day at the mall for me anyways it's the magic eye the guy in the mall trying to stare at the uh, magic eye I think that i saw mall rats before i saw clerks just this guy is super frustrated standing in front of a magic eye and in the mid 90s magic and early 90s magic eye were huge those things were your i hated the magic eyes like i could never see the magic eye i'd be like taking so long and everyone would be like oh my god yeah it's this and i'm like it's not working for me, I can't do the magic eye. Next finalist for Radflix Comedy 1995, directed by Amy Heckerling, starring Stacey Dash and Alicia Silverstone, Clueless. And I think it had Paul Rudd in it. It was so much fun. These rich kids in Beverly Hills going to high school. If you have any preteen girls or teen girls that haven't seen this, watch it with them. They'll get a kick out of it. Rolling with the homie. The final finalist goes to Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau in the sequel, and the movie is Grumpier Old. Old Man, directed by Howard Deutsch. And we watched this so many times in our house. And Margaret. Sophia Loren. Yes, Sophia Loren. Oh, she's so beautiful. Brooks Meredith just kind of owned in these shows just the, with his one-liners the wish in one oh, hand and crap in the other and see which fills first the kid swallowed a quarter well if she craps out two dimes and a nickel then i'd be concerned john gustison and max goldman were the name of the characters in that one it's just a simple movie it reminds me honestly of like father of the bride or something like that just where yeah, it's just, just a easy to movie. watch family comedy winner of raddest comedy 1995 goes to adam sandler's billy madison the second place for 1995 goes to tommy boy third place is a tie between clueless and mall rats you're not the I, only I, female on this panel this oh. time this time around so next category for rad flicks action sci-fi adventure and the finalists are first up directed by john mctierman starring jeremy irons samuel jackson and bruce Willis the movie is Die Hard with a Vengeance Die Hard 3 with a Vengeance this one John McClane teams up with Samuel Jackson running around New York City Jeremy Irons is uh, Alan Rickman's brother Hans Gruber <laughs> Die Hard 1 I think aged the best Die Hard 2 and 3 are really good when I was in New York I went to see a comedian and he was in, he was in this movie and, and got to know him so I actually did watch this movie recently I love Die Hard movies they're so good and I'm with Ian Die Hard is a Christmas movie except for this one this is not the only one it's not a Christmas not movie. a Christmas movie <laughs> I heard one and two die harder take place over the Christmas vacation this is the first one to take place I think it's in the summertime hot time summer in the city was the opening track on this yeah. movie next up for finalists directed by Kevin Reynolds starring Jan Triplehorn and Kevin Costner the movie is Waterworld a huge budget and Dennis Hopper was in this movie I remember really actually quite liking this movie thinking it was really cool it's about this loner this mutant who develops gills and is evolving with the world around him. There's all sorts of rumors about dry land and people selling souvenirs and from the human world. Mad Max, post-apocalyptic stuff. I really liked it. Saw it in the theater. Up next, directed by Catherine Bigelow, starring Angela Bassett and Rafe Fiennes. This movie is Strange Days. Do you remember this one? I don't remember this movie. What's it about? Dystopian future on, on New Year's Eve. Former cop turned street hustler, Rafe Fiennes, becomes embroiled in a dangerous conspiracy involving virtual reality technology and a murder he witnessed. I don't really...
And remember, next finalist produced by Tim Burton, but this time he gives up the director's reins. I think it was because Batman Returns wasn't as big a commercial success as Batman. The movie is Batman Forever, directed by Joel Schumacher, this time starring Val Kilmer, Tommy Lee Jones, and Jim Carrey. The debut of Robin, who's Chris O'Donnell. I loved this movie. First of all, Val Kilmer in anything. Val Kilmer is a great actor. Tommy Lee Jones, Jim Carrey. It was pretty vivid, good costumes. I love the Batman movies back then. I remember really not liking this when I was a kid. I like Jim Carrey and I did mention Jim Carrey's performance in this in my Jim Carrey list on this channel. Number 10 all time Jim Carrey performances. I'm going with 1995's Batman Forever in his role as the Riddler. For me, the Riddler is a great character and uh, <laughs> probably the best thing about Batman Forever. Check out the channel. It's at my friend Joe on YouTube. Hashtag Joe Pinated is a good way to find me. Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face was awful. Jim Carrey was good. Val Kilmer was okay. He really wasn't in it that much. I, I, I watched that Val Kilmer documentary and really excited to be Batman, but then felt like he couldn't really spread his wings. I maybe need to watch it again because I don't think I've watched this since the 90s. I remember the car climbing the wall. And I remember just feeling like, that's cheesy. You're such a huge Tim Burton fan that you would have been like boycotting liking this movie because he didn't direct it. I think there's definitely a Tim Burton bias from Joe because Joe loves Tim Burton. He produced this movie, number one, so he's still involved. I don't know if at the time I, I had developed a Tim Burton bias. Like, I don't know for sure that I really knew who Tim Burton was at this point. I must have known right around this time. I don't think I had pieced together that he had done Pewees and Edward Scissorhands and all those ones. So, I mean, we would have watched anything with Jim Carrey in it and just been eating it up. That's true. I definitely watched it. I don't think I, wa I don't know if I watched it in the theater, but I definitely watched this one. Next finalist for Raddus Action Sci-Fi Adventure, directed by Robert Rodriguez, starring Selma Hayek and Antonio Banderas in Desperado. At the time, it was like Antonio Banderas and Selma Hayek. I freaking love Selma Hayek, personally. Like, every time I see her in an interview, I always gotta watch it. I love I love her. She's so funny. You know, Robert Rodriguez style obviously marries well with Tarantino. I mean, they work together quite a bit in the future. This movie is, you know, very Dust Till Dawn style. A lot of crazy crazy action going on. It's almost like a comic book brought to life. Very stylish, very cool show. Next up for finalists, Radis Action Sci-Fi Adventures, directed by Ian Softley. The movie is Hackers, starring Johnny Lee Miller and Angelina Jolie. Johnny Lee Miller was Angelina Jolie's first husband. Her mom was Marceline Bertrand. Next up, directed by Michael Mann, starring Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, and Al Pacino. The movie is Heat, called Classic. Similar to, say, Scarface from De Palma, like this thing is just super popular. I had the pleasure of going to the bar in Greenwich Village where they filmed the scene between De Niro and Pacino. Really cool spot. Look into it if you're in Manhattan. Like I said before, I love Val Kilmer. And I mean, who doesn't love Pacino and De Niro? It's kind of something wrong with you if you don't love them. Action pack. Next up, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld. Starring Gene Hackman, John Travolta. The movie is Get Shorty. Rene Russo. Do you remember the guy who wrote this? Oh, it's Elmer Leonard. So Elmer, Elmer Leonard, Leonard wrote it. I remember reading a couple of his books later. I think maybe he wrote Jackie Brown. He wrote something that Tarantino used. Oh. He wrote another movie that I really like. Anyways, funny movie, start to finish, like entertaining start to finish. A loan shark from Miami travels to Hollywood, becomes embroiled in the movie business while trying to collect a debt, encountering eccentric movie makers and mobsters along the way. Next finalist goes to Mel Gibson, Sophie Marceau in Braveheart. I mean, there's definitely some action action in this movie and some really incredible action in this movie. You can take my life, but you can't take my freedom. David versus Goliath story. Funny, the other night, my son was saying to me, do you think that we watched Braveheart more than any other movie? I said, I think it was between Braveheart and Shawshank. Love the music in the movie and the scenery, the the cinematography is amazing back home in Scotland in the motherland. What's funny about this movie is that I remember when it came out in the theaters, somebody in my class had gone to see it. And he was like, oh man, you got to see Braveheart. That guy wasn't really that trustworthy. Ah, so-and-so thought that movie was good. Like it probably fucking stinks. My parents rented it. We watched it on the TV downstairs. Blown away. I'd never seen anything like that before. It's an epic. It's like Spartacus. It's like one of these big epic tales. Gladiator basically tried to be this movie. I'm glad you mentioned the music beautiful very scottish final finalist we made it all the way to 10 for action sci-fi adventure directed by michael bay starring martin lawrence and will smith bad boys bad boys bad boys well, that was a theme from cops but i think it was the theme of this movie too will smith is in his prime back then 
before he slapped Chris Rock. What an idiot. Same with Mel Gibson. Like, what a, come on, you guys. Like, stylized action movie, not a ton of substance. It's a Michael Bay movie. Tia, Tia Leone yeah. was also in this one. And the winner for Raddus Action Sci-Fi Adventure goes to Heat, starring Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Runner-up, Raddus Action Sci-Fi Adventure 1995 goes to Die Hard with a Vengeance. And third place goes to Batman Forever. I agree. Heat was the best. Shootouts in the street were incredible. It looked honestly like you're watching an actual shootout in the streets. <laughs> Next up, Family Movie Night. Finalists for Family Movie Night, we have five finalists. First one, directed by Chris Noonan, starring Magna Zubank, Zubanksky and James Cromwell. The movie is Babe. Heartwarming movie uh -huh. about, a, about a pig named Babe. That'll do. I was kind of at the age where it wasn't cool to like kids' movies anymore, but this was, this was one that was sort of liked by adults and kids alike it was just a really easy to watch movie finally figured out how to make the animals mouse move properly and i bought it when i was a kid i remember being kind of embarrassed to buy the movies that came in the, the old disney cases but i did i bought two and one was this and one was when they reissued et if you look right here you can see so this is my movie collection around grade 11 ish so there's babe and et those two i was talking about and there's bambi but that wasn't mine because i don't even think i watched bambi the whole way through until i was in the Adult. I had nightmares about Bambi. I, I remember having a nightmare when I was five or six about Bambi. Next up, directed by Stephen Herrick, starring Glenn Headley and Richard Dreyfus. The movie is Mr. Holland's Opus. And this one's an epic about a band teacher named Mr. Holland. Glenn Holland. Beautiful, 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 beautiful boy. It's one of those sentimental, like the Wonder Years. It's kind of like watching that, where it's just sort of really easy to watch. You get the same kind of feeling from watching watching the holdovers. They look similar. They act similar. Next finalist for Family Movie Night, directed by John Lasseter, starring Tim Allen and Tom Hanks, Buzz Lightyear, and Woody. Basically the first big computer animation movie, the first big Pixar movie, Toy Story. I saw Toy Story with my son in the theater. He loved Buzz Lightyear and Woody. And he wanted a Woody singing cowboy. We got him the Woody singing cowboy for Christmas. Buzz Lightyear pajamas. Toy Story was spectacular. Love all the Toy Story movies. I definitely saw a Toy Story, but I was out of that kid age of that time. Threw it on a lot while I was babysitting. Next up, directed by Joe Johnson, starring Kirsten Dunst and Robin Williams. The movie is Jumanji. Anything with Robin Williams I'd watch anyways. Lots of adventure and action in it too. It was a great movie. Honestly, I wasn't into this movie either when I was a kid. I never really watched this movie when I was younger. I only watched this movie later in life. Partner is a massive Robin Williams fan and every second movie we watched for the first couple of years together was a Robin Williams movie. And that's kind of when I came to like Jumanji. Of course, having kids and once my kids rolled enough, my partner, you know, forced this movie down their throat. So they all love Jumanji. As far as like the discord goes and the community around Radflix goes, this one was across the board, was on a lot of lists. So Jumanji ranked very high. And the last finalist for Family Movie Night, director Peter Hewitt, Tom and Huck, starring JTT, Jonathan Taylor, Taylor Thomas and Brad Renfro. JTT, obviously huge deal from Home Improvement, Teen Stud, 16 Magazine and all those sort of things based on the adventures of Tom Sawyer. I like Jonathan Taylor Thomas. He was in that movie about the Santas coming home. I'll be home for Christmas. I really like that movie with him and all the Tiger Beat magazines. I was a bit too old for him. He had come off of Lion King where he played Simba the year prior. Forgot about him playing Simba. Forgot to mention him in 1994's Radflix. And the winner for Radis Family movie of 1995 goes to goes to toy story tom hanks and tim allen runner up for raddest family movie 1995 goes to babe it's a tie for runner up between babe and jumanji toy story was massive and i mean it's still massive through all the sequels all four of them next category is raddest drama 1995 raddest drama 1995 the finalists there's eight of them the first finalist is directed by brian singer starring gabriel byrne kevin spacey 
Benicio del Toro, Stephen Baldwin, The Usual Suspects. You were like, you gotta watch this movie. It's so good. Joe likes more artsy movies than I do. I wasn't so sure, but oh man, it was so good. Not everyone had seen it because I've still met people over the years that haven't seen it. I'm like, well, we gotta watch it. So I've watched it quite a few times because I like want people to watch The Usual Suspects and I want to see their reaction. Like the Kaiser Soze. Kaiser Soze. One of the best screenplays ever. It's a whodunit. Chaz Palminteri too, sorry. Kaiser Soze, this gangster. All these people are super scared of this gangster, Kaiser Soze. Scariest gangster since Tony Montana. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. And like that... He's gone. Next up, directed by Michael Mann, starring Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. It's Heat again. So Heat, we've talked about that one quite a bit. Next up, this one's been featured on quite a a number of episodes on Radflix so far. You'll find us on the Martin Scorsese Top 10 Movies Countdown on this channel. You'll also find it on Robert De Niro's Top 10 Movies on this channel. You'll soon find it on Joe Pesci's Top 10 Movies on this channel at My Friend Joe. This one co-stars Sharon Stone, James Woods in Casino. Uh, Um, 1995 Casino. I like Casino more than Goodfellas. This is usually the debate amongst my friends anyways. I don't know if that's normal or not, but uh, these are the kind of things we like to discuss. Uh, James Woods and Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci have worked with Martin Scorsese quite a few times. Funny story, when I first rented it with another person on the Radflix panel, Ian, we watched the second cassette first. This was a two cassette movie. We're just like, wow, this movie's intense. Didn't really know what was going on, but like, wow, like, holy crap. And it made it to the end of the movie and the credits start rolling. We're like, shit. You know, an hour and a half later, we decided to put the first one back on and then I proceeded to watch the whole movie again. Sam Ace Rothstein, Sharon Stone nominated Mm -hmm. for an Academy Award for this movie and she didn't take it home. I think that's really disappointing because I like her role in this way more than I like uh, Susan Sarandon in Dead Man Walking. Wasn't crazy about Dead Man Walking. It's no casino. And what Sharon Stone did in this show, other than Elizabeth Shue, maybe in Leaving Las Vegas, I'm not sure if she was nominated in that category too. She might have been supportive. I thought Sharon Stone deserved it. I always just think of Sharon Stone when I think of Casino and I know coming out of the house and that glam white outfit. I love Sharon Stone. It's a long movie. That's one thing I find about Scorsese movies. They're really long. Fired as editor or something in the last few movies are really Uh. long. They're too long. Newer movies are so long. I watch them in like two or three sittings because I can't sit through a three hour movie. Loosely based on a true story, which is kind of cool. And there's an episode on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description about this guy who compares it to the real history. Braveheart's another one where like Braveheart's like not a single thing about that movie is true. It's sort of loosely based on, on actual events. I think the guy actually who wrote Casino wrote it based off an article that he saw or read or a newscast he saw about this couple having a very public argument in their driveway those scenes where they're arguing in the driveway are just incredible so that's i love that don rickles as well is in this movie finalist raddest drama 1995 goes to braveheart mel gibson's braveheart (laughs) that's just knocking the story he won a bunch of awards he wasn't even nominated for best actor which is kind of nuts because he did a pretty good job in this movie william wallace not as bad as that queen movie and how far off they went with history on that shit next finalist for raddest drama 1995 goes to empire records directed by by Alan Moyle, starring Anthony LaPaglia and Liv Tyler. Steven Tyler's daughter from Aerosmith. Independent record store, Empire Records. Do you remember this one? I do, actually. One of my good friends up north, this is her favorite movie, and she is a movie buff, and this is her absolute favorite movie. There's a few people I know, Empire Records is their number one movie. Yeah, it all takes place in one day around a record shop. And the final finalist, starring Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy, directed by Richard Linklater. The movie is Before Sunrise. I don't remember Before Sunrise. It went over really well in the Discord. The winner for Raddest Drama of 1995 goes to The Usual Suspects. Laxama Kaiser Soze. Kaiser Soze. Uh, Kubayashi. And the runner-ups, second place goes to Casino, directed by Martin Scorsese. And third place goes to Braveheart, directed by Mel Gibson. Next category, where you get to learn a little bit more about our Normal People panel. On this one, we have five people on our Normal People panel. First up is Ox. Second most watched is Casino and most watched overall is Jumanji. Next up, Jesse. Third most watched is The Usual Suspects. Second, Empire Records. Most watched for Jesse, a big Adam Sandler fan, is Billy Madison. Worked with this guy for a while and 
fuck did I get to hear every line in Billy Madison a thousand times? Next up, Caro. Caro, what are your most watched from third to most watched? Uh, my third most watched was Empire Records. Second most watched was Usual Suspects. And my most watched movie was Braveheart. So for Ian, the third most watched is Braveheart. Second most watched is Casino and his most watched movie. And I can also attest to this is Heat. Goddamn guy didn't stop watching this movie for two fucking years. Next, certainly not least, myself, Joe Pinionated. Third is Die Hard with a Vengeance. Second is Billy Madison. And my most watched movie of 1995 is The Usual Suspects. The panel, third most watched is Braveheart. Second most watched is Billy Madison. And most watched movie of 1995 from our Normal People panel goes to The Usual Suspects. Last raddest movie of 1995. The finalists are Casino, Robert De Niro, Sharon Stone, Joe Pesci, Don Rickles. Next up, Pixar classic, Pixar's first big movie starring Tim Allen and Tom Hanks as Buzz and Woody in Toy Story. Next up, directed by David Fincher, starring Brad Pitt, Kevin Spacey, and Morgan Freeman. The movie is Seven. Put the Seven Deadly Sins. If you know what they are, put them in the comments below. Carol would like to know. And uh, I'm just dying for any fucking comments. Send me some money. Next up, finalist for Raddest Movie of 1995 goes to Billy Madison, starring Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, the late great Norm MacDonald as well. Rest in peace to both those guys. Guys. Next finalist, and it hasn't been mentioned up to this point yet, directed by Woody Allen, starring Mira Sorvino and Michael Rappaport. The movie is Mighty Aphrodite. This was actually one of my very favorite Woody Allen movies. Check out my Woody Allen list. It's on this channel. I was a big Woody Allen fan growing up. I love his books. His books are very important to me. The books he wrote before when he was doing stand-up. I love his comedy. I love his writing. When I was getting into nerdy movies, Mighty Aphrodite might be one of the first sort of like hoity-toity movies that I kind of like. Extremely funny. Laugh out loud funny about this guy who him and his wife adopt a kid and he wants to trace down their, the kid's biological mother and when he finds her it's Mira Sorvino and she's uh, she's a call girl. Next up, directed by Mel Gibson, Braveheart, Sir William Wallace. Next up, Heat Al Pacino, Val Kilmer and Robert De Niro. Finalist for Raddest Movie Terry Gilliam's 12 Monkeys Brad Pitt, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis is such an underrated actor. Bruce Willis performance of 12 Monkeys is one of the best performances of the 90s and he's just on fire at this point. Shout out to Bruce Willis. I know that he's struggling these days and not doing too well. Definitely a hero of mine. And the last finalist for 1995 goes to The Usual Suspects. Benicio Del Toro's role in this movie too. Gabriel Byrne, incredible in this movie. Uh, star Miller's Cross. You know, we talked a bit, quite a bit about that in the previous episode from the Coen brothers. Kevin Spacey won supporting actor for this movie. The supporting roles of Stephen Baldwin who's excellent, but especially Benicio Del Toro. This is the first time I even remember seeing Benicio Del Toro he's almost kind of skinnier and almost unrecognizable but for somebody to come into a movie like that that much presence on screen I flip you I flip you for real every line that he does in that movie is perfect in my opinion the unsung hero of the usual suspects is Benicio Del Toro anyways that's the last finals and the winner of raddest movie of 1995 goes to it goes to the usual suspects get real the runner up is uh, Martin Scorsese's Casino finishes second place for raddest movie of 19 95. I mean, there's nothing like the usual suspects. I'm so glad this one. How do you feel, Carol? Super happy with this choice. Yeah, this movie is the best movie of 1995. So that does it. So that's uh, 1995. We're more than halfway through the 90s now. Check out the channel. There's about 100 episodes on this channel. Lots of music lists and rad flicks movie episodes about movies. Top 10 lists for certain actors and directors. I got it rolling with Stanley Kubrick. Series of directors, series of actors. Now we're going through year by year. These are not pretentious picks. These are just rad movies that have stood the test of time. And I want to thank the musicians letting us use your music in the show. Remember to check the description for their links. I'd also like to thank the Normal People panel, especially Caro, on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. As far as movies go, I really couldn't go too far outside of when video stores existed. With streaming and all that sort of stuff, I lost track. Really from about 1968, from Stanley Kubrick's 2001 until about 2010, I know my movies. Outside of that, I don't. And I'm not saying I've seen every movie and I hate people that say they fucking have. This show is sort of anti that shit. And if you have, like seriously, get a fucking life. Go outside, watch Radflix and save yourself some fucking time. Feel free to gank my list. Live and let live. Be normal. Mind your own fucking business. I'm sorry I'm a little low on facts and high, high, high on, opinions. on opinions. Respect the raddest movie of 1995, The Usual Suspects. Respect to Caro. We'll catch you on the next one.